What is your circle of dust right now? I think we like to play this game. Yeah, I, I think Abreu's performance the other day reinvigorated my belief that he is still, you know, one of the top three guys in the back of the bullpen. I, I, I same thing. I don't, I don't not believe in Ryan Presley because I've put him at number one in my circle of dust. So Presley and and Abreu for sure. To me, I always believe in Naris. I believe that Naris is a guy that been there, done that, and whether sometimes he does it with smoke mirrors and a Houdini wave of the wand or not. He gets it done. And so those are where I start, those three guys. And then when you look at it, Graveman's teetering right now. And I think Dusty's trying to figure out who this iteration of, of Graveman on your roster is going to be. So I think that he's up in the air. I think that Montero's obviously way up in the air. I think the guy that's kind of on the fence is, is, is Stanek. I think Stanek has lost a lot of confidence along the way with how they've juggled him around and used him. So I, I, would, I would right now put Stanek on the outs, and I would say that, it's essentially the three guys in my circle of trust, my big circle of dust, are going to be Presley, Abreu, and Naris. And after that, it's all to be determined. Yeah, I think the fourth spot you argue about, right? Like Presley, I'm with you. Presley's in my top. Abreu's right after that. And then I have Naris after that. The fourth spot of the circle of dust is kind of up in, up in the air. I think he'd like it to be Graveman. I think, I think everybody that's wants why to they be are, Graveman. Yeah, but I, I think that what he's shown you so far is that you can't pull the trigger on that and say that he's the guy. I think... First half of the season, you'd, you'd believe it was Maton. But second half of the season since the All-Star break, maton has been a different pitcher, too. He was used a lot, and a lot of people, and maybe Dusty to some degree, is starting to lose a little faith in Maton. I think Maton is still... Actually, I think I think if the, if Dusty was picking his circle of dust right now, Maton's last outing might affect this. But before his last outing, he had Maton ahead of Graveman. He did. He had Maton ahead of Graveman. Like, is that flipped now? now I don't know. Neither one's pitched. But, but see, I was gonna say. But now, if Graveman in his last outing would have been better than he was, I think that that Grave he would have had the confidence to say Graveman's now above Maton. But Graveman hasn't looked great since he's come back. So I think that right now it's who do you trust more of two guys that you can't have the utmost trust in? Is Montero still the last one Here on this list? Yeah. Yeah. No. I think he I, – Since I, Ju June 25th, yeah. he gave up three earned runs to the Dodgers. His era was 7-7-6. Seven, seven, it's now a 5-9-4. He's given up three earned runs in his last 12 appearances. All three are home runs. He's been damn good. And there's a lot of too many performances in here. I know it's not all high leverage, but there's some in there. Who's I, he above? Is he above Stanek? He's above Stanek for me. I don't think he is. Is he I'm above Maton? Stan, I'm not a Stanek guy. See, yeah, I don't either. think I don't think he's above Maton. From your point of view, is he ahead of Maton? No, Maton's been so bad lately. He has been so bad, he's but in front he's still of Maton so for bad lately. But I, again, I, it's not just the susceptible to the home run Montero. I just don't have any confidence when he takes the hill. Whereas I think that I have more confidence in Maton, so that's why I'll lean Maton. I have I have zero confidence in either. If that's I'm being fair. completely yeah. honest, and, that, and, that, I, and that, I, I think most I people feel that way. Agree. I just right now, it's Montero. For the me. the the twelve games that Joe's talking about, Montero's got a two thirty ERA in those twelve games. Like Montero's in better form than Maton. There's no doubt about that. Montero's in better form than Graveman, if we're being honest. And Montero's in better form than Stanek. I still don't trust <laughs> Rafael Montero a whole lot. After those three, I mean, you're throwing darts. Like, after Presley or Bray Unaris, and because it's a seven-man bullpen right now, because you have six starters, Maton, Graveman, Montero, and Stanek are like, I mean, those are your low-leverage guys, and just throw a dart each time. Like, who who knows? Uh, Maton one day is going to be bad. Graveman hasn't been good since an Astro. Montero had a terrible start to the year. Stanek, like, he hasn't been nearly as good as he was last year. But if I had to choose one that I, if, say, I got to go to a guy in that list right yeah. now to get uh, three outs. I, I'm probably leading Mayton. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm leaving Graveman. I'm leading Graveman too over anybody. Else. I would oh, go yeah, I Graveman. I was thinking more Graveman and then Montero. So you, I would go Graveman. After that, I'm probably going Montero. Then I'm probably going Stanek and then Mayton. Prisoner of the moment. Mayton's been terrible. I'm lately. going Stanek so after Graveman. Okay, and then Montero, Maton. You're going Maton. I'm going Maton, then and then Montero. Oh, man, you don't like recent form at all. I just don't like Montero. <laughs> it's not even the contract. I just don't like his approach when he gets out there, and it scares me that he gives up a lot of contact. Yeah, it scares me that, that Maton can't throw strikes. Well, I, should, I get that too. <laughs> That's fair. Ryan Presley didn't pitch the other day when we're usually seeing Ryan Presley, and it happened after he had an off day too. Dusty was asked about it after the game. Said he's like kind of tight, like a little bit of sore. Nothing to be alarmed about, basically, but didn't pitch. Uh, are you concerned? Are you alarmed uh, by this at all? Or is it something that you're monitoring that Ryan Presley, after a day off, didn't pitch in a game we would normally see Ryan Presley? Well, 
didn't they also in the post game talk about him? Was it injury or he needed more rest? Yeah, he said it was like sore and they wanted to give Soreness. him a day there you or go. whatever. Yeah, there you go. That would be the only thing that concerned me. Pitchers are going to have meltdowns. But things are going to happen. We've seen it happen as much as Presley more times than not has been really, really consistent. Someone you really believe in in high leverage. He's had a couple of meltdowns during the course of the year. These things happen. The only thing that I was concerned about is when they said that he needed some more rest because he had soreness. Well, then tell me where the soreness is. Tell me what we're dealing with because that would concern me. You're past the trade deadline, and if your closer has some kind of a medical issue that might be a problem or might rear its head again down the stretch, now I'm extremely concerned. Yeah, Dusty's exact quote was that uh, Dusty Baker said Presley wasn't available because he was sore. He's healthy, he said. So he's healthy. He's just uh, just a little bit sore, the Ryan Presley guy. Timing's not great because of the fact that you're not running away with the division and you've got some big games coming up against the best team in the American League, and and now after that, you're still trying to catch the Rangers, so there's a lot that says you need your closer healthy. Yeah, he's healthy, but soreness and not being able to pitch bothers me. We'll see how this series goes. The, if yeah. he's available for the for the Baltimore series and he pitches, then I'm going to be fine. It's one of those things where I'm not like worried about it, but I do want to see him pitch and then like see his effectiveness. And if he pitches tonight and he, you know, he mows down the Orioles in a safe situation in the ninth inning, I'm like, okay, yeah, nothing. Well, to be and you know what you and all. I watch about with him. We we need to we we check on his velocity, mm -hmm. and then we just kick. We, we check on his location, specifically with his breaking pitches, too. If he's locating the spinners and and his velocity hasn't fallen off, I'm not worried about Ryan Preston. It's also a decent way. Like, if he's a little bit sore and there's nothing, like, actually, uh, like, up, like, he's just a little sore because he's an older guy, he had pitches the fourth. Like, you have a day off yesterday to go visit the White House. Like, it was a pretty decent time to do this. And then, secondly, you won the game. Like, you won the game that Ryan Preston would have been used in. So it kind of like it could potentially really work out. Like if Presley comes out and the rest of the way he's extremely fresh and like the Ryan Presley that we know and love. Like it worked out for Dusty Baker because you didn't lose a game. You're able to buy him a day before actually a few days before you have an off day for a critical part of the schedule. So it might actually work out for Dusty Baker. No, it, it might, but I think it's the luxury of having a bullpen that's as as deep and talented as the back end of this bullpen is. As much as they've been taxed and overworked in some cases, you have a ton of talent there. The Bra the Abreu can step in for Presley is a good thing, but so is the Stanek can step in for you know, you know Naris or Naris can step in for whoever. The fact that you have and then again, if Kendall Graveman didn't look like he looked since he's become an Astro, but you still believe he can do what he can do, you have enough guys that have closed in the past that have been in high leverage in the back end of the bullpen in the past that it can be musical chairs for a day or two if a guy does need a break or some rest.